Um, so yeah, like Stuart said, uh, we developed a, a net zero carbon concept home, uh, and what the key challenge was uh, with it is how do we scale up towards these future regulations that are coming in, in particular the 2025 regulations and then the journey towards net zero carbon homes. But the, the Z House project that, that we've kind of labelled it is an example of how the AMCH project kind of grew from the initial concept and the initial scope. This was added on as kind of the industry changed and carbon and net zero became a significant um, factor within the industry. So this was added on as the, as the project developed. So it was looking at some of the key challenges we face as an industry moving forward. Skills, have we got the installers we need to install all these different technologies, things like air source heat pump, ground source heat pumps. Do we have the amount of people that we need if we're going to install these across all of our new build homes? The capacity, both from the installers and from the suppliers side, the manufacturing side, to deliver the amount of air source heat pumps, for example, that we need across all of our new builds, not just as Barrett delivering 18,000 homes, but also all the, uh, the major house builders and the SMEs as well throughout the industry. Overheating, obviously a key challenge as we make our buildings more thermally efficient, so we're monitoring that as well within the Z House project, along with indoor air quality, as we're making our buildings more and more airtight. What's it like to live in the home? What's the indoor air quality like within the home as well? All of these challenges we've tried to answer as we've moved along with the, uh, the Z House project, and also the impact of um, installing things like um, vehicle charging points, air source heat pumps, PV panels. What's it like to live with these technologies instead of just installing them and getting the, the benefits from them? Uh, as well. So these were just some of, some of the key challenges um, that we wanted to address as part of the Z House project while keeping all of these things scalable and keeping that in mind, would, would we roll this out across all of the homes going forward in our journey towards delivering net zero homes by 2030 throughout all of the, the homes we deliver within Barrett? So the key aims of the project was to challenge the supply chain, bring them along with us. You'll see in a second we, we got a vast amount of partners involved within the project because, as we've said throughout the AMCH project, it's not just about the partners that are within it, getting the learnings and running off. It's about bringing the industry along with us as well to get the benefits as an industry-wide solution. It's the integration of all the multiple technologies. You'll see we, we put a vast amount of new technologies that we wouldn't normally put in our homes looking at the future spec, but also looking at beyond that and the different heat emitters and things like that we can use within the home. And then it's finding the solutions for the next generation of sustainable housing. Not something that's just a concept that we build a one-off, but making something that's scalable that people would want to live in and uh, that our customers would want to buy as well. But doing all this while still keeping it commercially viable and a scalable solution in our journey towards 2030 and delivering zero carbon homes across all of our business. So the key drivers that we addressed within the project was carbon reduction, uh, both operational and embodied carbon, biodiversity and wildlife, wildlife obviously becoming a key factor. So we looked at the garden design, and we partnered with the RSPB. Water usage, what, what target can we get down to the amount of water each person uses within the day within the home and what different technologies can we implement that would reduce that. Um, health and well-being within the home, I touched on indoor air quality. Uh, overheating, things like that. What's it like for people to live in the home? So on top of this project that we're going to monitor, and I'll touch on it more later, but we're going to have someone live in the home over a full year period as well to give us that post-occupancy uh, evaluation as well. And skills as well, working with our current uh, supply chain and also the wider supply chain, are the skills there to deliver homes like this en masse uh, across the UK? So this is just an example of all the partners that uh, we got involved within the project outside of the normal AMCH partners uh, as well. So it's all about, like I said, bringing and collaborating with the industry, bringing them on that journey towards the, the road to net zero, if you will. Uh, I've just got a sh short video now that will give you an idea of uh, the, z the zero carbon house as a whole and a high level overview, and then I'll dig down into some of the different technologies uh, that we implemented within the home as well. We've got over 40 partners on the project, plus 10 to 15 consultants and designers. What we're doing is bringing together an eclectic group of very innovative technologies to deliver a zero carbon home. So we have 95 sensors in that home. We've got some students moving in, they're going to live in the home, and then we're going to monitor the environment that they live in and how the technology interacts with them. 
They're monitoring the quality of the air in the home, how different technologies interact with each other. And we're just collecting that data because that will play an important role on how we design our houses and the technologies we put in them in the future. You've got to have hard data to make those key decisions. So that gives you a high level overview of what the Z House project was about and some of the different technologies um, that we implemented within the project. I'll do a bit more of a deep dive now into the different technologies and, and give the, the, a bit of a background and what it was like implementing these technologies within the Z House. So as you probably saw from the video, it was a partnership with Salford University. That's how we came about. Uh, Salford University are experts in energy monitoring, so that's what draw us, uh, drew us towards them. Sorry. Um, so the build location itself is on University uh, of Salford's campus. This means it's taken the risk out of developing this type of system within our, one of our sites that we are potentially going to sell to one of our customers at the end of the day. It's taking that risk away from that, which again gives comfort to us as a developer, but also comfort to the likes of the NHBC that we brought along the journey because there's, there's less risk, the fact that we're not selling this house to a customer following that. So it means we can trial different things and take on a bit more of a risk doing this type of project. It was adapted from a, a standard Barrett house type. It's an Alderney house type, which was the whole idea of keeping it scalable and selling, uh, creating something that our customers uh, would want to buy and that we'd be able to sell throughout the Barrett group and the wider industry. It was a closed panel timber frame system with pre-fitted external cladding uh, on one of the elevations to give us the concept idea of scaffoldless erect uh, as well, using a lightweight cladding system, so eliminating a brick layer on site and the need for a brick layer, also eliminating inert waste on site as well, which was a massive step towards that as well. Off-site panelised masonry ground floors, so you've probably seen from the video, uh, has got a brick ground floor ex external skin, but no brick was ever delivered to site, no brick layer ever turned up on site, all that was done off-site and then uh, brought as panels, story height panels, to the Z House location. The roof again was roof tiled on the ground, so this is the next step in the evolution of what we did earlier in the MCH project, so it's using a lightweight roof tile and integrating PV on the ground and then lifting that on the closed panel system once it's been done. So we also use uh, what we call insulated precast concrete ground floor units, so this is essentially a, a cast concrete unit with insulation underneath that is brought to site in planks that you can see on the right there. To give you an idea of time frame, the, plot, the full plot that you can see there was done in half a day. So it really speeds up things on site. What we say is that for every four traditional ground floor units, you could do, sorry, for every one traditional ground floor unit, you could do four of these. So that's a massive, again, speed benefit in terms of resource, but you also put that together with the amount of waste on site, the amount of operatives in site, reducing the amount of risk uh, in terms of health and safety on site as well. We used a closed panel timber frame system uh, with factory fitted windows. We used 100 mil insulation uh, within the panel to get us down to a 0.19 average U value. So that's again moving towards the next step of the regulation changes and looking what we'd need to do beyond that in the 2025 reg changes. Uh, we used different reflective VCLs, membranes as well, and also factory fitted windows that are on brackets that we could push out once the, uh, the masonry panels were in place uh, to give us that tolerance on site that we always need uh, on site as well, because the material tolerance, the installation tolerance is also what's a nightmare uh, with off-site design. The off-site masonry panelized system uh, was developed by Forterra. It's called Quickwall, so that is essentially a full brick, no different to what you just lay on site. It's 102.5 mil wide. The only difference is, is that laid, that is laid out in a cast off-site within Forterra's factory. Uh, with high strength mortar pumped in between and reinforcement going between the joints of the brickwork. So what this does is eliminates the need for a lintel, uh, eliminates the need for wall ties because you've just got a bracket at the top and the bottom of the panel so you're reducing the amount of thermal bridging as well that's going on but you've still got that cavity between the closed panel system and the masonry system which is what the NHBC like and it gives them that extra bit of comfort for water ingress and things like that. The cladding, like I said, we had, we had the prefabricated masonry wall that is installed up to 12 times quicker than traditional panels. The whole ground floor went up in one morning and then there was a little bit of tweaking after that. So um, it increases, like I said, up to 12, 12 times quicker than traditional masonry and doing it brick and block. It condenses that site program, eliminates the need for on-site storage. Obviously, bricks take up a lot of room on our sites. 
Uh, the compressive strength of the, the wall is typically increased by 50%, uh, as well as the flexible strength increasing as well. So that was the ground floor, and then on the first floor, we used uh, a, James, a product from James Hardy, so it's the Hardy plank system, so it's a fiber cement board, uh, factory fit to, to the closed panel timber frame system, but still maintaining that cavity between uh, the closed panel timber frame. So it's low maintenance, uh, fade resistant as well, and reducing, you've got the embodied carbon benefit as well of not using a brick product uh, on site. PV, as I touched on uh, previously, PV is going to be introduced more and more as the building regulations change as we go forward. We maxed out the amount that we could put on this roof, on the roof, so we've got 25 panels uh, in total, generating an annual energy outcome of roughly 4,600 kilowatts an hour. Uh, that's equivalent to, as you can see on screen there, 7,722 washing machine cycles. Love a good fact with the Z house, it won't be the last one. Um, so that's enough solar generated for a family of four uh, for a full year. In fact, it goes above and beyond that. The, the Z house is actually 125% carbon reduction when you're looking at uh, the Part L regulation. So we've took it beyond the, the zero carbon. We've pushed it to, to how far we could get. So we're getting into unregulated energy territory there. Um, again, learnings from the, the previous uh, project we did on, on AMCH, installing the roof on the ground, doing the roof covering on the ground, and then lifting that on top of the timber frame panels once erect, giving you that weather tight and water tight unit within a day uh, that you can then start working internally and externally, not holding up the build and adjusting the critical path of the build, more importantly. With regards to different heat technologies that we put within the home, we, this home was built without no gas, so we're using an air source heat pump with a cylinder. Um, so it can equate to an over, overall carbon saving of around 78% by switching to the air source heat pump, um, the upgrade's freely available from heat energy from air, transfers it into the home to provide hot water for the things like radiators, underfloor heating that we installed throughout the Z house, and we also used um, a skirting board heat emitter system that I'll come on to later. This gives a continuous supply, so the reason why underfloor works so well with an air source heat pump is because you've got the water at a lower temperature. Air source heat pumps generally work at between 45 and 55 degrees, as opposed to a gas boiler that's at 70 degrees. So the more you can spread out the surface area of what you're heating, um, the more efficient the system is, because then your radiators are just getting bigger, um, which is obviously a design issue in our house type layouts, because radiators are always awkward to fit in. It's always where you want to put your furniture. So uh, that's a key benefit as well. Operates down to temperatures down uh, as low as minus 20 degrees. So obviously it's a concern. Um, within the marketplace and within the industry as being without heat within the home if we're using the air source heat pump if things do get down too low so that gives you the comfort that is it does work down to minus 20 and then low maintenance um, because what it, what it does is requires only water and electrical connection and there's less interference with our customers in the home because someone could come around that's remote diagnosed and then someone could come around if they need to just go into the back garden you're not having to liaise with the customer to get access which is a headache from a from a developer point of view. The heat emitters, we use um, kind of three different heat emitters uh, throughout the home. So we've got the heat infrared panels that they touched on during the video. So that, in, in theory, is a zero carbon way of heating your home. The electric is generated throughout the PV panels and then fed into the infrared heating um, to give you that zero carbon heating effect. Uh, it takes only four minutes to heat up. And what we've noticed from the Z House project, it is quite an intense heat. It's a radiant heat as opposed to heat in the air. So what that means is it heats the surfaces, it heats us, it heats the, the sofas, as opposed to heat in the air, which is arguably wasting energy to heat part of the room that you'll never use. The thermoskate system that you can see in the middle there is an alternative way of using a wet system that we would use in our radiators, but putting it within the skirting boards. So then you're saving materials on site there. Uh, it's more efficient than radiators, but that's what the the good thing about this project is we'll be able to monitor the energy usage uh, between the thermoskirt system and radiators to see how much energy is actually used to get to the same heating level. Low water content, suitable to work with radiators as well. So in the Z house, we've got radiators in there and these thermoskirt systems to switch between the two. Uh, and it's compatible with smart devices to give you the controls, uh, which was a key learning in the Z house project. And then obviously we've got underfloor heating that you can see on the far right there that works well with an air source heat pump and something we're looking at to consider rolling out in our homes moving forward uh, in the future. 
The kitchen, again, we challenged all of our supply chain uh, in terms of sustainable materials, low uh, embodied carbon materials, renewable materials. So the kitchen was the first example. The cabinet boards, a minimum of 50% recycled content, and the doors themselves are 100% recycled chipboard, as well as it being a smart kitchen. As well, the appliances that we've got in there, uh, I'll touch on a bit more later. Uh, the handles on the cabinets themselves, uh, a combination of coconut fiber, which is a renewable raw, raw material. So everything in there, we try to think of everything in the Z House in terms of materials to reduce the amount of carbon um, that we're using throughout the build. Touched on the smart kitchen, so we've got a smart oven. So what that'll do, you go home on a night and you want your, your food cooking to a certain level, you would tell that oven you want it cooking to a certain weight and it'd use the exact amount of energy, it'd weigh the amount of food that you put in and use the exact amount of energy to cook it to how you want it cooked. So there's no waste in the amount of energy used. The fridge freezer uh, uses um, humidity monitoring to make food last up to three to four days longer. The average family of four wastes 450 pounds of food every year. So if you think that has a significant impact on the amount of waste we produce um, as a customer in the home. A smart washing machine uses steam instead of water to refresh the clothes. So if you wanted to go home on a, on a night, put your clothes, unsoiled clothes in the washing machine, set it to the same steam function, you're using 60% less water. And then same with the dishwasher as well, uh, using the steam function. And then we've got a four in one, one tap to eliminate the need for a kettle, uh, which again uses excess electricity because we always fill the kettle up too much. But well, I do anyway. And then the smart systems as well, th this was a key thing that we wanted to and a key learning of the project, to be honest. Um, we've used smart light switches and sockets throughout the home that is, uh, works with the Google system, so you can control all your, your devices remotely, uh, and you can speak to Google to tell it to turn the lights off and things like that. But what we did have a key learning from this is getting all the technologies that we put in there to work with the one system. And we, we never got over that within the Z House project, so that's the next step. Is there something out there that will integrate all these different technologies? And we've just got one app that we can use everything. Because what we don't want to do is give, our, give the Z House type home to a customer and hand them 11 apps to control all these different technologies. It's just not something that they're going to want. It's not something they're going to want to buy. And it's just not practical uh, for us to roll that out. Battery storage and in Viva is obviously with the solar PV uh, on the roof. They all were also installed on the ground and then lifted with the roof structure themselves. We've got two five kilowatt batteries in the roof, uh, which obviously equates to, to 10 kilowatts, but can run a laptop for, under, for up to 200 hours. And then we've got two different EV points because what, we, what we've got is a standard wall box uh, product uh, in, and then an Ilion Stelio. That was easy. Um, which would be our standard one that we'd roll out. But the Warbox product is a, the EV charger that does vehicle a grid. So it's a, essentially using your car as a, an extension of a battery in your home. And then when you've got excess electricity, you can use things like the Octopus system, um, the Octopus energy system and the Give Energy system, the energy management system to sell that back to the grid. So effectively, touched on it earlier, it's trading electricity for you throughout the home. And then also low water usage, uh, touched on it. Can we get down to different targets? We've set targets as a business to how many waters, how many litres per day we, we want to get down to, but can we push that even further? So we've got two different shower systems within the home. We've got one that uses an engineered solution, so increasing the air droplets of the shower by using high velocity air. Uh, can use up to 60% less water, so the standard shower uses 10 litres per, per, uh, per minute. While you're in there, this can be brought down to four litres per minute while giving you the same sensation of a normal shower. A couple more facts on the screen there. I won't read them out for you. You're sick of them. And then health and well-being. Obviously, indoor air quality touched on it right at the beginning. It is a key concern for us um, as we move forward and make all of our buildings more thermally efficient and airtight. So we use different products throughout the home. Dulux, Shield, Airlite, British Chips and Plaster. They're all break down the volatile organic compounds within the home uh, and improve the indoor air quality that's within the home as well. And then biodiversity, like I said, we partnered with the RSPB uh, to give us a gold standard garden design. Um, we've got different things within the home. We've got bat boxes, swift boxes, hedgehog homes, hedgehog highways, bee boxes. Uh, we try to think of everything. We've got a smart water butt that is linked to the green wall that you can see in the picture on the top left there. So what the smart water butt does, monitors the, the weather 
it's always raining in Manchester, so I never need to worry about watering it. But if it did need to water it, it knows it needs watering every six hours and it needs 1.5 litres, the smart water, but it'd know if it was going to rain in the next six hours. If it wasn't, it's linked to it and then that would feed the green wall whilst also uh, collecting the water, obviously, from the, from the downpipes. And then, I don't know why it says biodiversity garden again. Um, and then this is the, the challenge that I touched on. It's that energy management system, and it's uh, getting everything to integrate together. So we use the system uh, from Tribe, uh, which are part of Light, Light Source Labs, which are part of the wider BP group that do that energy management system. And you put that together with Octopus Energy, and that's when you get into your home trading electricity for you. It buys it while it's cheap during the night, for say, stores it in your car, stores it in your batteries, and then when it's peak, uh, around five o'clock when everyone gets home and turns the kettle on and the prices are peak, it can sell that back to you because it knows you're not going to use that energy uh, in the next 12 hours, for example. So it's trading electricity for you without you actually having to do anything, which is significant, obviously, with the, the energy increases that are coming up. And then finally is the monitoring. Obviously, we're partnering with Salford University because they are experts in this area. So to give you an example of the extent of the monitoring, we've got over 95 sensors throughout the home and we've got a kilometre of data cable. So that everything that's going on in this home, we'll have, we'll have a data point for it. So once the students move in and they live in there for up to a year, they literally won't be able to move around the house without us knowing what they're doing, which is a good thing. I'm sure you'll agree. So that's the, before I move on, that's the Z house and the, the zero carbon house. I'll take questions at that point just before I move on, because obviously right, covered the No, I've just got a central mechanical uh, system where I've got MVHR, just because if that was a, Barrett decision as opposed to personal, like a personal Barrett decision, just because we've had issues with it in the past. But that's what we're going to look at next in the next project. So in order to get the air changes you need, you, 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 you are wasting a little bit of uh, heat in the air. Yeah, yeah, because it, it, it's designed to um, the same that we would roll out yeah. in our standard product now in terms of air tightness. Question here, yeah, first really, company really the, um, I'm really encouraging you to post up We've, uh, we've actually already done a two-week stint with the students. Uh, two students lived in there back in December uh, for a two-week period, and it was very positive because um, obviously there's concern about using all these different technologies and how they integrate. But the initial two-week period, that the, it was very positive feedback, and obviously we've done a lot of testing as well with Salford University, which we're waiting for the results for. And then obviously when they're moving there, a full-year period, we'll get that in-depth um, feedback off them as well. I think there's now a British standard for uh, occupancy, isn't it, uh, for post-occupancy evaluations and stuff like that. So maybe in future projects we could sort of test and that, so I'd use that British standard as a mechanism for POE and BPE type uh, accommodation. John, you had a question at the back there. I, I know you qualified this and said that you want to you know, go for a year and then do you know, the full analysis, but I mean, it is fascinating and for those of us in some of the room might be aware, um, back in 20 10, we saw the first year of monitoring on the four bedroom Aurora house that was built in a similar fashion as South Lanarkshire College. And the average annual, the running cost, sorry, for that year, the first year was I think £89 for all energy. And interestingly, here, of course, particularly in the energy specific area, look at the amount of solar you could put on 125%. Of course, time of use will be the challenge there. Oh yeah, definitely. And we, we have done some initial monitoring. So to give you a comparison, a Victorian house, the annual bills are say £1,600. The, the regulations that we build to today, around £1,200. The Z house we estimate to be around £410 annual bills a year. 90 of that are standing charges for things like meter maintenance and things like that. So you're looking at around £35 a month for your bills if you were to live in the, that type of home. Hopefully that answers Excellent. it. Any other questions before we move on to the next one? Stand in silence, they're all written down stuff as well, so it's good. Yes, so, um, I had a question. Um, obviously, this is designed for manufacturing assembly, and I was wondering if you had any plans or you were looking into. 
to design for disassembly. So obviously at the moment this looks like you're focusing on the in-use stage, but then also part of the in-use is the maintenance, so replacing components, so that would also improve the um, embodied carbon, but then also in terms of circularity in general. We did consider it for this project, uh, and that is how it initially set about. It was going to go into uh, the Energy House 2 building, which is an environmental chamber, and we needed to consider the disassembly of it as well, because we needed to move it back out. Um, luckily for us as a design team, we got a plot of land, so we didn't need to think about that, because that obviously adds a lot more to it. But that is the next step, and that is the next project we're doing. We're building one within the Energy House, and we do need to think about the disassembly. So that's the design process that we're going through at the minute as well. It's the Energy House 2 is, is what it's within. Uh, it's with Salford University campus. It's just around the corner from where we They've actually got a stand that. here as well. It's basically an environmental change where you can build a whole house within it. Okay. Uh, they're actually future built near the front uh, as you come in, if you're interested in uh, seeing that. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So in the interest of time, then we'll just move on. I think there's two quick ones to finish off. Yeah, very quick. Yeah, touch yeah. on the commercial uh, aspects of uh, not necessarily the Z house, but uh, you know, the work you've been doing there and then the embodied carbon, is that right? Yes, that's yep. right, yeah.